All right, welcome back. So tonight I want to show you how to set your camera so that you can get the best high ISO performance uh, for taking astrophotos. Now, uh, astrophotography stuff, we're dealing with stuff that's in the sky that is very, very faint. Um, in the daytime, you get 100,000 photons per pixel. For this kind of stuff, you get maybe 100. And so we need to squeeze every bit of performance out of this camera that we can. And in order to do that, I'm going to show you some settings here. Now, these settings come with one caveat, and that's there's a little bit more there's a little bit of extra complication involved here you need to do calibration frames and calibration frames would be dark flats and biases those three if you're not taking those three then you wouldn't want to use these settings but these settings the advantage of these settings is that you can have a huge improvement in your high ISO performance it virtually eliminates all noise in your images all right so you're probably wondering okay if I use these settings how much of an improvement am I going to see because these settings do require a little bit of extra work on the back end uh, well I can promise you about five stops of high ISO improvement and that's huge okay because we as astrophotographers you know we really have to fight against noise noise is our biggest enemy now tonight is a full moon but I'm still doing some faster photography tonight and that's because I've got my narrowband setup going which if you want to see some more information on that, you know, keep watching my channel. I'll be talking about that later, and it is exciting stuff. All right, so first let's go through the Super Control menu, and there's just a couple of things in here. I use ISOs between 800, 400, and sometimes 1600. It really just depends on the object. For white balance, I use daytime, neutral color balance, all these settings I set to zero. And there's one other important thing here. For your color space, select the Adobe color space. sRGB will actually clip uh, certain types of colors a little bit. Manual focusing, obviously, raw, and then you want to use the full sensor, and that's it for this menu. Now let's go into the deeper menu. We'll start all the way at the top here. Even in the autofocus area, there are some things that we're going to want to control. So this right here is something that I turn off. It's Whenever you power up the camera, it resets the lens to what the camera thinks is infinity. The dangerous thing about this is if you're taking flats, it can reset your point of focus because the actual point of infinity is never going to be the same as what is marked on the lens. And so for this reason, I turn this setting off. Image stabilizer is something that I turn off for still pictures, which would be the astro photos that we're taking. Now frame rate, this is like the displayed images in the viewfinder and on the back LCD. This I set the normal rate. I do not set it to high rate. High rate is for like daytime stuff mainly. Normal will allow, because the camera is actually taking exposures and it's displaying them on the screen. And at normal it will use a slower shutter speed so to speak to take that image and display it on the screen. Which is better for you know darker stuff. If you were to set it to high, you'd probably have a noisier view. Now these here are some pretty important ones. So noise reduction. I turn all noise reduction off. I turn all noise filter off. ISO is whatever you want to set it for that particular image. Now why are we turning off all this noise reduction? You say noise is our biggest enemy. That's because the calibration frames that we can take will do a much, much better job of reducing noise versus these in-camera features. And then down here, this is live time. Now, live time, it's going to update the view that you see either on the computer or here on the LCD screen or in the viewfinder, for that matter, of what picture you're taking. If you're taking a long exposure, this is if you're using a bulb timer. Now, typically, for actually taking the photos, I use the longest one, which is 60 seconds. But if I'm composing an image and I'm using bulb, I'll often set it to 4 or 8 seconds. All right? So that's that menu setting. Same thing, live time. Just adjust that same setting for live time instead of live bulb. This is shading compensation. I turn this off as well because flats that we take are going to do a much better job at reducing vignetting than the in-camera uh, settings will because I've noticed that there's sometimes some rings or banding when you start stacking a lot of images if you leave this setting on and that's actually 
something you'll see with just about any camera. And then lastly, of course, use Adobe RGB, not sRGB. And those are my settings.